Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will see how to do clustering using QGIS. So typically, I'll be using the K-means clustering algorithm. So let's see what is K-means clustering algorithm first. So this is a commonly used distance-based clustering method to classify the data sets based on the similarities. Now, by similarities, we mean it can be a variable. Maybe if you are using rainfall to cluster those points, so according to the properties of that variable, we will divide that data points into different groups. Suppose if you are using more variables, maybe rainfall and rainfall. So you can. So you can use n number of variables. You can use either one variable or the clustering. Now, the K-match clustering algorithm, the aim is to minimize the sum of square distances between the data point within a cluster and its center. So we just formulated as minimize the summation over WCA. So this WCA is given by summation over Xi minus mu k, where Xi is a data points and mu k is the mean of that points. And here you can see k over there. So this k is nothing but the number of clusters. Okay. So typically the optimal number of clusters we need to find out before using this k-means cluster. So how to find this optimal number of clusters? See, if you have about 100 data points and simply you are giving maybe 9 clusters in it. So that might not be the optimal number of clusters. Maybe it divides it. Maybe the cluster difference between one cluster as well as other cluster will not be that uh, different. So you need not get 9 clusters when you can do all this and find the same properties and separate that in a 3 or 4 clusters. So we need to find out the optimal number of clusters k to do this k-means clustering method. The commonly used method is the elbow method. So the elbow plot looks like this. So if you plot this elbow, this is the sum of squared errors and number of clusters. Where you can see an elbow drop over there, that number of clusters. So elbow method is a commonly used method. So in one of my research, I used elbow method where I had only small number of locations to do the cluster. So I found it a very pretty reasonable to use elbow. But when I had large number of data points, I went for an R package, which is NB cluster, which had about 26 indices. So these are the 26 indices. Now, using these 26 indices, I found out the optimal number of clusters. So, for one index, the optimal number of clusters might be 3. For the other index, the optimal number of clusters may be 2. For the other index, the optimal number of clusters will be 4. And then I found out the frequency of this cluster. I'll show the graph how the frequency looks. So, this is the frequency graph. So, you can see the best number of clusters and the frequency over this 26 indices. So we can see two cluster, it's about nine indices, three and five and six, it's about only two or one indices only. They are showing that to be optimal number of clusters, but they can see the number of cluster four, which is to be optimal. And I can find that in about 11 indices, indicating the dominance of the optimal number of clusters to be four. So by using this NB package, NB cluster in the R studio, so you can use R or my studio order, which is according to your thing. Yes. So in the NB plus package, I found out the indices and the optimal number of clusters using the right indices. And then I plotted a frequency graph, which showed to me the optimal number of clusters for your data successful. So I have optimal number of clusters. Now we can do the K-means cluster in using the QGIS. So in the processing toolbox, just type clustering there. So if you type clustering there, you can see K means clustering. And you can see K means clustering ABC if you have the attribute based clustering plugin over there. So you can use K means clustering or K means clustering ABC. I'll show the difference. So here you have the input layer as rainfall 2022 January. So this rainfall has about four values over there. Rainfall for the January, April, August and number is there. So the study I'm gonna show you on 119 locations. So this was actually an Excel sheet. 
the I can show the attribute table. This was actually an Excel sheet. I imported that into the QHIS and then exported that into a sheet plan. So if you are not aware of how to import Excel into the QHIS, please refer to one of my previous videos. So back to the clustering. So KMS clustering, you can see here KMS clustering. Or if you have this attribute based clustering plugin, you can actually download it from the plugins. You can install it from the manager and install it. And there you can see KMS clustering ABC also. So the difference here is if you use KMS clustering, just KMS clustering, you have to input the variable layer over there. So input layer, and then you can type the optimal number of clusters to be for us. You can run that. Okay, so it's going to take all the variables and all the features over there. So it's based on distance based. Now, instead of that, if you use this KMS clustering ABC from the attribute based clustering, see here you can use the fields for cluster. So, if you want to cluster based on only January, you can use that. April variable also you can use, August variable also you can use, number, or if you want only January, you can use that. So, this is the benefit if you use KMS clustering ABC. So for now, let us use this KMS clustering. So for now, let us use all the variables. So for January, April, August, and number of clusters, email number to be four. Then let us run this. Yes, the KMS clustering is done. So this is the cluster layer. So let us see how the clustering is preferred. So you can see the classes are 0, 1, 2, 3, which means actually the four first class. And let's go with the properties and see how this looks like. So the class classified apply okay. See the clustering. So if you use all the variables of January April. August and November, just the rainfall. This is for the year 2020. So you can see it's not fully based on the region. So it has a dependence on the region, but in some locations you can see over here. So this blue is of one cluster. So this has a similar property with this location over there. And also here you can see the red. So that cluster properties is being scattered from the north into the middle, and you can see some locations for the south also. So kind of maybe coastal regions. So the regions has typical similar properties of the rainfall for the year. So this is how we'll do the K-means cluster. You can also do the K-means clustering using the original K-means. You can use the layer over here just to use the number of clusters for there. So this is typically distance based. So if you use that and run it. Here you can see that cluster layer. So I'll show you how it can also. So just go with properties, categorized, and you can see the class ID there. Let us classify them and apply. Okay. So you can see it's distance space. So we have some locations. You want to divide it, get it, and do some calculations and clustering. So we mostly prefer to use this variable based cluster where you can actually cluster the link instead of the distances like variable properties. So this is about the coastal state of the cluster. Since the variations are from the coastal to the high ones, we cannot say that it's fully all the based on only distance. So there are some different properties in some locations as well. So this is how we do the Cayman's cluster. Thank you for watching and happy research.